Good morning, and welcome to All Face Unitarian Congregation. My name is Doug Cartwright, and I'll be leading the service today. Um, I'm also Sadie's uh, support human. <laughs> so Sadie is sitting up in the front row. She usually is back in the back to uh, um, avoid making a fuss. But she was 16 years old on Wednesday. Here you will find a diverse and inclusive spiritual community where we welcome people with many beliefs. You can bring your whole self, your full identity, your questioning mind, and expansive heart. At All Face, we have more than one way of experiencing the world and understanding the sacred. And as we say every week, and we mean it, no matter who you are, wherever you are in your spiritual journey, and no matter whom you love, you are truly welcome here. Is anyone visiting for the first or second time? If so, raise your hand. <laughs> welcome. We're glad that you're with us today. If you would like to know more about All Face, please see Fan Fran Way, who is with us today after suffering a, um, a minor injury. And uh, she will be at our service uh, uh, at our service desk, welcoming corner, which is just behind the folding doors. Or, <clears throat> if you wish, you can go to our website at allface.org uh, and uh, find out more about All Face and membership. Today we will have a special collection for, oh, excuse me. This month we are collecting for our minister discretionary fund to help people in need. Take your check out to All Face and write MDF in the lower left space. And that's all this month. So you can, uh, you can do it um, next week or the following week or the following week. Tuesday <coughs> at 1.30. Climate Action te Team meeting will be on Zoom. Thursday at 10 a.m., there is a membership meeting. At 2 p.m., there is a choir rehearsal. Friday's Dominoes at All Face at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And Sundays at 9.15, as always, News Talk with Ray Ellis. Sundays at 10.30 a.m., uh, there is a child and youth program with Kathy Fanny, as usual. And... Marsha Bates would like to make an announcement concerning life. And I'm not talking about life as our lives. <laughs> I'm talking about Lee Interfaith for Empowerment, which is a group of about 15 congregations who work on social justice issues uh, here in Fort Myers and Lee County. And LIFE is inviting all of us to their first large gathering of the year. Hurricane Ian kind of um, threw a wrinkle into their normal uh, yearly schedule. And the event is called Love in Action. And that's three words, not love in action. It's love in action. <laughs> And it's going to be held Monday, February 13th at Coventry Presbyterian at 6.30 p.m. And Coventry is, is located just oh, maybe four blocks north of here uh, on the other side of the street. Um, easy to find. So persons from all 15 congregations that support life's activities will participate in small roundtable discussions about social justice concerns the, that we see here in Fort Myers and the surrounding communities. Attendees' feedback will be uh, used to identify potential social action issues that life can work on in the upcoming year. Some city officials are also being invited and it's hoped that life's attendance will be large so that the people in power can see that we have people power and their constituents are concerned about social uh, injustices in, in the community. 
And you'll also hear updates about life's affordable housing trust fund activities and life status as a whole. So we need a rough estimate on how many plan to attend so they can have enough tables set up. And I also heard that there's going to be cookies there. So <laughs> they need to know how many to, to bring. So if you have questions, you can ask me or Barb McFarlane after church, after the service. And there is a sign-up on the bulletin board. So see you a week from Monday, February 13th at Coventry Presbyterian at 6.30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. <clears throat> Today we have a guest singer, Felicia Rose, who is a friend of Joan Marshall's daughter, Rama Devi. She was inspired to become a musician after a spiritual encounter with humpback whales. We're delighted to have her performing her own celestial music heard in her dreams. Now we would like to invite you to rise in body or spirit as we sing together hymn 361, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. See page two of your order of service. asking Eileen Moran to come light the chalice and as she comes forward please join in reciting the words in your order of service as we light our chalice let us contemplate how our lives are lived enhanced by our relationships with our pets and all our living creatures Please join in singing, Go Now in Peace, as children leave for their child and youth program with Kathy Fanny. Good morning, everyone, on this beautiful day in paradise when we're celebrating uh, our pets and all the little creatures that light us in our lives. And we have a special thing today during Joys and Sorrows we're going to start with. Marge? Thank you. Well, we're going to combine them all today. We've got a joy, a sorrow, and great gratitude for Linda Bigelow. Come join me. <laughs> Linda, it has been a great joy to have you, our gracious hostess. And it's with sorrow that we know you are retiring, but gratitude for all you do for all faiths and all of us and we're grateful for you thank you so much and this is just a little something from your board of directors thank you uh, 
well, Judy included a moisture light and meter for you <laughs> because I overwater everything. And my father used to say I had a black thumb. <laughs> so hopefully, but thank you for all you do. This is such a welcoming community of people. You can't do better. We're very grateful for her hospitality and taking care of us every Sunday for such a long time. Thank you, Linda. And I always enjoy her hat celebrating the gators. It's a thing about living here in Florida. Gators are one of our great creatures we can celebrate. It's the first time I've ever seen Linda Bigelow without a hat. And I asked her what was going on and the woman, the homeless woman who was here, said that she had lost her hat and Linda gave her hers. Um, several decades ago, I met my friend Susie when we both worked for the same law firm in Portland, Maine. About 15 years ago, she moved out to Santa Fe, but we stayed in touch. And yesterday, I was talking to her and I found out that she is battling both COVID and pneumonia. So, I and she would appreciate your healing thoughts, sending them out west to her. Thank you. We send our healing thoughts her way. I heard from Peggy J. Singh that she's suffering from a bad bout of flu right now, so she cannot be with us. We ask that you send your healing thoughts her way. And uh, I have kind of a joy, too, to share. The, um, I talked with Joyce Schaefer, and she said they haven't been here the last couple of weeks because they're packing up to move back to their house that was flooded by the hurricane. But she promises that she and Wayne will be here in two weeks when we have our Founders Day. And that day is going to be devoted to honoring our founding minister, Reverend Wayne Robinson. So I hope you will all be here then. It will be a very spe special day of celebration. And there are forms for you to sign up for the luncheon that day too. So be sure to... Uh, fill out your form on what you'd like to have when we have our cookout. This I'm lighting for all of you who have joys and sorrows in your heart. And I'd like to invite John Conrad to come forward to express uh, both his sorrow and his optimism for the future. As you know, we uh, are in the middle of the pledge drive for this coming year that begins April 1st. And as of uh, this morning, uh, we're at 60% of reaching our goal. Uh, we've uh, had 48 people pledge uh, for a total of almost $140,000. Our goal is 231,000 and change. So uh, there's today, there's next Sunday, and the deadline is Wednesday, February 15th. So. Um, be thankful, be generous, and we appreciate your help. Thank you, John. And today I want to also light a candle of appreciation for John Conrad, who is our current treasurer, Doug Cartwright, who is a past treasurer and leading our services today, and Sharon Gray, who is a past treasurer and also in charge of our pet shelter collections. So we are very, very honored and pleased to have such wonderful people doing such great things here and volunteering to serve our congregation and the community in so many ways. We thank you very much. I don't know if uh, the rest of you heard, but as Linda was being escorted down the aisle by Bob, she muttered, 
It's been a long time since I've had a man walk me down the aisle. It reminded me of a story. Diane and I have a good friend with a great singing voice, and she used to uh, be a choir director at our uh, high school that we taught at. And uh, she would volunteer to sing at students, former students' weddings. And one of the, and she used to take requests for their favorite song. So as she was walking down the aisle behind the couple, as they uh, exited the church, they had a request for her. And she sang, there is someone walking behind you. <laughs> She said that was the most uncomfortable thing <laughs> she had ever done. <laughs> now I'd like ask, to ask everyone to close your eyes, take a deep breath, and let us turn our minds and our hearts to today's service and contemplate our blessings. Please rise in body or spirit as we sing together hymn 123, Spirit of Life. The words are on your order of service. opening words are these, and it's called dogs and cats. Dogs come when they're called. Cats take a message and get back to you later. <laughs> dogs believe they are human. Cats believe they are God. <laughs> the cat is such a perfect symbol of beauty and superiority that it seems scarcely possible for any true, esthete, and civilized cynic to do other than worship it. So this is a song for the Divine Mother, the Shakti, the Goddess, whoever moves you, the Earth, the Mother, and all her creatures. And if you know the words, at some point you can sing along. 
it's a chant that I share at different kirtans and Sanskrit events.
Thank you, Felicia. Um, the order of service says uh, that the reading is always love your pet, but I found an article on the internet that I want to read to you in, in um, lieu of that. I subscribe to uh, RefDesk, which is a, a news source. And there was a, a, a story about this dog. You may have read it in the newspaper. You probably can't see it, but I, I'll post it on the bulletin board. And the, uh, the byline is, a Portuguese pooch that was almost killed at birth has become the world's oldest dog. Two weeks after Guinness World Records announced a 23-year-old Chihuahua as the world's oldest living dog, a much more senior came, came, canine came out of the woodwork to claim the title. Bobby, B-O-B-I, is 30 years and 266 days wow. old as of February 1st, according to Guinness. He is a purebred, oh God, I'm going to screw this up, Refiero do Alenqueo, <laughs> a livestock guardian dog with an average life expectancy of 12 to 14 years. Now he's the world's record holder for the oldest living dog. But originally, Bobby wasn't supposed to live long at all. Bobby was born along with three other male puppies in the rural village of Conqueros in Portugal. At the time, the family who owned them already had a number of animals and decided they could not take care of any more. One of the family's sons is Bobby's current owner, Leonel Costa, 38. He told Guinness World Records that it was common for people to bury newborn puppies they could not keep. So once Bobby and his brothers were born, Costa's father took them away to be buried. But days after, Costa noticed something strange. Bobby's mother, Gira, continued to return to the shed where her puppies were born. Despite it being empty, one day, Costa and her, his brothers decided to follow Gira and soon discovered that Bobby was alive, still in the shed. Costa believes his father possibly overlooked Bobby because his brown fur coat camouflaged him in the shed. Costa and his siblings decided to keep Bobby a secret for a few weeks, just until Bobby was old enough that his eyes would open and Costa's parents would not have the heart to turn him away. Bobby has gone on to live a long, peaceful life. Costa said Bobby has never been chained or leashed, but instead is allowed to roam free in forests and farmland that surround Costa's family home. He has always eaten unseasoned human food, which Costa thinks has contributed to Bobby's longevity. At 30 years old, Bobby has difficulty walking and his eyesight has worsened, according to Costas, but the elderly dog continues to enjoy each day resting, spending time with feline friends, and relaxing by the fire when it gets chilly. And here is a picture of Bobby with his friend, the cat, <laughs> who is unnamed. Bobby is not only believed to be the oldest living dog currently, but possibly the oldest dog ever. Before Bobby, the nearly century-old record was held by Bluey, an Australian cattle dog who was born in 1910. Bluey lived to be 29 years and five months old, according to Guinness World Records. Costa was stunned to learn that his dog beat two world records, but he's always considered Bobby special. Bobby is special because looking at him is like remembering the people who were part of our family and unfortunately are no longer here, like my father, my brother, or my grandparents, he said. Bobby represents those generations. Please rise in body or spirit as we sing together hymn 203, All Creatures of the Earth and Sky. The words are printed on your order of service. <laughs>
Good morning. Um, so this is what lo what's love got to do with it, and I need to sh get a few things straight. Did I put that turn off? I'm not Tina Turner. I'm not dancing, and I'm not singing it. Um, and the other second thing, one of them's on, is I have three cats. Boris, Natasha, and Nicholas. Some of you have met them. She's coming back. So how many here have a pet or have had a show of hands? Almost everyone. Where are we getting this feedback from? Yeah, it's getting feedback. Is it's not. Now, now is it off? Okay. There's so many of us in the, this country here, there's a good chance that we would wake up each morning and part of our morning ritual would include small paws walking across the bed or a cold, wet nose to our hand or a meow or a purr. This is going to continue. 68% um, of the U.S. households own a pet you get it? It probably would be um, higher if more landlords allowed pets. Maybe I can. Maybe I should just get the blue mic back up because that's gonna. So our 68 percent of the household owning pet, which might be higher if you landlords would allow you to have a pet. This is, winds up being about 85 million homes. And while dogs and cats, this is on because it's plugged in, right? No, it isn't. Hello? No, I'm, I'm still going to get it. I'm going to turn this off. Hello? Is, is this on? All right, it's going to sink here. Technical difficulties? No. Nope. <laughs> all right, so we should all have pets and a tech person around. <laughs> Let's see if we can try this again. Um, something's going on with them. Yeah, maybe that. Um, while dogs, Australia, pets outnumber humans. We really do cherish our pets. The American Pet Product Association, and yes, there's an association for everything, estimates that the U.S. spends, people in the U.S. spend $72 billion, that we will we'll spend $72 billion on pet expenditures which is up from 70,000 five years ago. These expenses are food, supplies, over-the-counter medicine, veterinary care, and live animal purchases. Don't forget, some people need to feed the reptiles and other services. The ways in which pets interact with their owners on a daily basis show what pivotal positions they hold and how today people treat their pets the way they might treat another person or a family member. The New York Times reports that 70% of the pet owners say they sometimes sleep with their cat, pets. I think that's a little low. 65% buy Christmas presents. 23% cook special meals for their pets. And 40% of the married women with pets say they get more emotional support from their pets <laughs> than their spouse. Amen. <laughs> The human-animal bond has evolved for more than 15,000 years, <coughs> excuse me, and it began as a working relationship. Animals provided protection and services to people, and this could have been through hunting, farming, or performing other tests, tasks necessary for day-to-day -day life. Dogs would track in herds, 
Cats usually lived outside and would kill and hunt rodents that otherwise would spread disease and damage foods or other materials. <coughs> Animals also served people during wartime. The U.S. Army Medical Department Journal mentions cavalry horses, sentry dogs, carrier pigeons, even mascots as historical military roles for animals. These animals not only provide protection, they offer stress relief and a sense of pride for their ha human ha handlers. Interacting with animals decreases cortisol levels, which is the stress-related hormone we hear about for the fight or flight, and it also lowers humans' blood pressures. Pets offer benefits for other human challenges, health challenges. Many older adults respond well to companion animals um, that they've brought sometimes to nursing or caring homes, um, and people really uh, react to that well. Diseases like depression, coronary conditions, and dementia can be exasperated by loneliness. By interacting with companion animals, one can experience positive physical effects. Similar results can occur in children during emotional, social, and behavioral development. People who express love for animals have been found to have a specific gene that produces the neuropeptide oxytocin, which is important for empathy and bonding between humans, particularly between a mother and an infant. Oxytocin helps people bond with animals too, especially baby animals. I'm not sure. I even people look at a baby alligator and say it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> the bonding between humans and animals can be observed in many settings. The working animals are known for their relationship with human handlers. Emotional support, therapy, and service animals provide comfort, offer security, and perform daily tasks for help their humans through life. Animals are an part, important part of healing process for people who have experienced abuse or trauma, including veterans who have served during wartime. Animals provide other services too. Law enforcement, enforcement depend on dogs to track and capture suspects, identify bombs, narcotics, the U.S. Navy uses dolphins to detect underwater mines. My first reaction was, boom, but don't worry. Mines do not explode because they sense magnetic presence of steel. And unless the dolphin has a steel plate in them, they're not going to affect the bombs. Marines use mules um, to mission and transport weapons, ammunition, supplies through difficult terrains as recently as Afghanistan, there were mules working there. Search and rescue teams use dogs to see, seek out people, dead or alive, in disaster areas. Electricians and cable workers have used ferrets to run cables in tight spaces that are too small and complex for humans to navigate. By the way, the ferret's favorite treat is the strawberry Pop-Tart used to reward them to get through the maze in case you ever need to do that. <laughs> the list goes on and on, all the ways we train animals to work for us. Beyond working animals and pets, that we, we like animals, wild animals. Zoos, aquariums, photography, wilderness, hiking are all how we share our interests in them. We cause problems when we intrude into their territory. Humans have had to make preserves and reserves for wild animals to live and flourish. Poachers and hunters have decimated many species for valuable hides, horns, or parts for strange and unusual, questionable medical care. So where am I going with all these statistics and info, which many of you already know? I will blame it on Joyce Ramey, who asked me to speak on the love of animals, and she used Putting your love into action. That's what I'm supposed to be talking about. <laughs> I am an animal lover, always have been, and always will be. I've had pets all my life, dogs and cats as a child, but I've settled on cats as an adult. I'm kind of lazy. I like their independence. They don't need to be walked. You don't usually come home to a house full of chewed, 
things or poop on the floor normally. Um, but it was only recently that I began having more than pets and I have companions. Anyone can love a pet. We love them for all they do to us, for us. They make us feel comforted, understood, supported when times get tough. They make us laugh and smile with their silly antics. They can even make us cry when they start to get ill or pass away. So when does an animal start to be, stop being a pet and become an companion. I can't help but believe it's when we stop focusing on how they make us feel and start focusing on how we make them feel. To be an animal lover, we shouldn't restrict ourselves to loving animals, certain animals over others. We should try to love all, all animals, yet there are some animals we'd find hard to love. And insects, not too many people love them, but unless you collect them, and then they're usually dead, but. <laughs> I could not be considered a complete animal lover because my compassion did not extend to all species of animals, regardless of whether I had a personal relationship with them or thought of them as cute or smart. There's some way that love has eventually, this love has changed part of my life. In 2008, nine, I was, um, my grandson lived with me, and he was 15 and had gone to Unirandak, which is a Unitarian Universalist camp in the Adirondacks. He came home and had fallen in love that summer with a vegan. So he announced he was going to stop animals. I also, at the same time, same week, my exchange student from Bangladesh arrived. He expected meat at every meal. By then, I pretty much was eating mostly chicken, so I had to cook three meals a day. Um, Sam left a year later, and Justin still was not eating meat, so I decided to go along with that laziness and become a vegetarian. I eliminated animal flesh from my diet, but I was still eating their products, dairy, eggs, and we most of us have seen films about factory farming, but I guess they began to bother me more and more with the mistreatment of animals and the destruction of our environment. Even the industrial processing of egg production and use of, and treatment of dairy cows affected me enough that I gradually eliminated these foods after I moved to Florida. Since I moved to Florida, I met groups of plant-based folks and organizations and we had in our congregation um, John Camp, who's the son of Diana and Glenn Camp, and they haven't come down this year. I, I think they're both kind of ill. But their son John worked as an activist and an educator with both Vegan Outreach, which is an educational um, organization, and then he moved on to the Humane League, who focuses on negotiating with industries um, and restaurants to ask them to be more humane in their farming and for the restaurants to ask and demand from the industries for cage-free eggs, which is a start. Cage-free eggs is not exactly totally humane either. So I guess that this choice of my diet is not for everyone, but this is a UU and it's okay for me to bring up a diet that I believe aligns with my love of animals and the environment and it's healthier for me than the standard American diet. Over the last decade, I've seen a shift in many people I know who have begun to reduce their meat and other animal products in their own diets and lives. Folks often reduce eating meat for health reasons and may not be thinking of the health of the animals, but it gets the same results. Fewer animals are killed. In recent years, I found myself seeking to help animals in ways I had not done before. I turned to fostering kittens for Lee County Domestic Service, Animal Service. In addition, I had asked the All Face Board for permission to start collecting for local animal shelters. Um, we had done this up north where I had lived. And they granted that. And you all have been so generous in supporting and showing your love to that cause on every fifth Sunday in the year. Thank you so much. 
So if you have the funds, but maybe not a lot of time, when you do come to donate, there are wish lists that sometimes we put in our newsletter. They're easily found on every shelter's website. Um, we probably have one posted, maybe not right now. Every shelter has a wish list, whether it's food, gift cards, toys, bedding, litter, crates, cleaning supplies. Pick a couple items the next time you're shopping and you can drop it off at a shelter or save it for the fifth Sunday, our collection. If you'd rather spend times, even more time collecting, check out yard sales near you. Let your neighbors know. You're, you'll take some old towels, leashes, collars, carriers. There's free cycle online, same thing. Let your, yeah, uh, we did this. You're going to take a, you know them, because your congregation collects. So in, in the end, we are an independent web of all existence. It's a privilege to help the animals in the shelter. After all, we humans are the reason they're there. We are advocates of animal welfare, including our pets and other domestic and wild animals. We expect less from animals than humans, and usually they don't disappoint us. Perhaps that's why we tend to be more satisfied with critters than humans. Thank you. So we're going to do the collection. We're going into the collection. But before, I don't have really jokes, but I have a couple quotes that I found cute. Um, and for those at home, if they want to donate, our website is uh, www allfaceuu.org. It's on, <clears throat> it's on the side of the video. Here's one. Every boy who has a dog should also have a mother, so the dog will be fed regularly. <laughs> <coughs> Cats are the ultimate narcissists. You can tell this because of all the time they take grooming themselves. Dogs aren't like that. A dog's idea of personally grooming is to roll in the mud and onto dead fish. <laughs> My friend told me their dog's so shaggy, people are amazed when he gets up and suddenly they realize they've been talking to the wrong end. <laughs> and lastly, if you think dogs can't count, try putting three biscuits in your pocket and give Fido only two. I have a, um, a word a day calendar on my desk, and um, recently I've run out of words, so I, I have a, a non sequitur uh, cartoon a day on my desk. And um, I think Wednesday this week there was a picture, a cartoon of a, an old lady sitting in a chair in, by herself in her living room and her cat was facing the opposite direction, totally ignoring her, looking around at the surroundings. And the old lady had a daisy in her hand, plucking petals. And she said, she tolerates me, she tolerates me not. She tolerates me. I thought what, that would be fitting for uh, for our collection, I also I also ran across a, an internet ad for T-shirts, and uh, one of them was a dog with puppy dog eyes, you know the type, looking, staring at you, and underneath there is the caption: Every meal you make, everything you bake, every bite you take. I'll be watching you. <laughs> so the or morning offering will now be taken.
Then we start letting it go. Okay. Deep within every being alive, there is a well with water from the source of all life. Filled to the brim with eternal love, God's love, Spirit's love, unconditional love is inside of every one. Drop your burdens, let go. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. to leave them in the past dharmic grooves from lifetimes before they don't serve us anymore wrap them up in a great big box and give it up to spirit let it go drop it in the river let it go burn it in the fire forgive yourself for hanging on so Oh, 
let it go, let it go, let it go. Love fill your soul. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Let love fill your soul. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Let love fill your soul. Free yourself. Let it go. Thank you, Felicia. <clears throat> the closing words are called, How Enlightened Are You? If you can live without caffeine, if you can be cheerful, ignoring aches and pains, if you can resist complaining, if you can understand when your loved ones are too busy to give you any time, if you can take criticism and blame without resentment, if you, you can ignore a friend's limited education and never correct him or her, if you can resist treating a friend better than a poor friend, if you can face the world without lies and deceit, if you can conquer tension without medical help, if you can relax without liquor, if you can sleep without the aid of drugs, if you can honestly say that deep in your heart you have no prejudice against creed, color, religion, gender preference, or politics, then you have almost reached the same level of spiritual development as your dog. <laughs> okay, so this next song is called White Horse, which really, I have no idea if you can hear me in the back. Okay. okay. So, yeah, this is not a sing-along. This is a song. But again, Joyce chose the songs. What she didn't know was that this song was written while I was watching pods of dolphins jump and going crazy while I was writing it. And there's a line, one line in about it, a white horse, and my spiritual teacher loved that line because she used to uh, go to Egypt all the time and ride a white horse all along the... Um, desert in the moonlight so that's her favorite line she's since passed but this is a song for her were you with me in the night helping me to make rose colored light with a wave of my Spread love all through the land. Through the land. Singing love, 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 love of God. Oh 
Thank you, Felicia. It seems uh, appropriate that that, that tune is called White Horses because, and you uh, wrote it while uh, watching a pot of dolphins because um, we have a British friend who uh, always calls white caps white horses. And I think it's a British thing uh, of referring to white caps as white horses. We thank Sharon Gray for her inspiring message. We thank Felicia and Carlos for their music, Regina Kelmartin on camera, Ed Elrod on sound, Joe Gaten our sexton, sexton, Joyce Chafer for flowers, and our friendly greeters. We particularly want to thank Linda Bigelow for arranging our hospitality service, hospitality service for the past year, and we invite others to get involved in providing hospitality on Sunday mornings. Contact Marge DeGalbo or Regina to arrange to participate in serving our congregation. It is good to be connected and to be present in whatever way that we can. And now I'd like to invite Eileen to come up again and extinguish the chalice. And please join in reciting the words in your order of service. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts and out into the world. Please join us for birthday cake. There are four February birthdays, and you can partake if you're not a February birthday. 
and uh, for conversation as well and coffee in our social hall. See you next week.